What's up guys, my name is Zach, and if you're like me, then you probably downloaded an app called TikTok by now, especially being stuck at home with nothing else to do. And aside from making TikToks, you might be consuming a lot. And I just thought this would be a fun video idea because I'm a software engineer. I wanted to see what kind of software engineering TikToks people are putting out there, what kind of BS are people setting expectations out, like what coding is, they're probably like showing off people being hackers and whatnot. I just wanted to see what the world has to offer in terms of what it's like to be a software engineer on a platform like TikTok, which is predominantly for uh, nine to 15 year olds. So I wanted to just take a look, react to a couple of videos and just see how, how it compares to reality considering that I actually do this on a day to day. I thought it would be a lot of fun. So hopefully you come along with the journey with me, see what you think, let's get started. Let's do this. Okay, so right now we're in TikTok and we're gonna just pick some random ones and see uh, the validity or see if I can relate to any of them. I've never seen these. All right, so this one's about becoming a software engineer and making $200,000. All right, so here's the deal with this one. Everything makes sense here, except for the $200,000. That is such a BS salary for right out of college. I hate to say it. Right out of college, you're looking for max, a little over $100,000, maybe up to $130,000 if you're absolutely incredible working at the top tech companies of the world. Um, $200,000 doesn't happen till way down the line, maybe as a staff software engineer. Uh, but when you first start, you're gonna be making between uh, 980 to 120, usually 130 if you're getting a phenomenal job, and that's including stock options. So don't listen to everything you see on the internet. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> that's so true. A lot of times when you're coding, uh, you're spending hours trying to figure out what the problem is. There's like one red line in the file and it's literally just like a bracket or a semicolon. And the problem is like it doesn't necessarily tell you a pre-compile, which means like before you render the code, if that makes any sense, it doesn't tell you where the issue is and you can be spending so long just looking for that line. But here's a pro tip, just do a uh, auto indent. And when you do auto indent with uh, your ID or the uh, program that you use to run your code, it will give you a, a easier way to find that problem. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the next one here. <laughs> That's so true. Oh yeah, I love these ones. It's saying that people assume that you're like a hacker, just like typing away, because that's what all the movies say. They're just like only on the keyboard, like freaking out, like like trying to hack something up. But what's really happening is you're just going crazy trying to debug this like one little line of code. So he's smashing his keyboard to say how to exit Vim. Uh, what Vim is, is it, it, it's a text editor that you use within the terminal. Now, in order to use Vim, you have to learn how to use it because it's run completely and utterly by the keyboard and by commands. So, if nothing's happening, it's because you haven't pressed the right character. Now, to start writing, you have to use the letter I, which means insert. But a lot of people who are just starting out, it's, uh, it, it's so funny how true this one was. Uh, let's go to another one. Okay, let's uh this guy me so dope. This guy's in who inspired the video. Oh come on. Okay, so what they're saying is like he has this incredible resume, but he doesn't have any experience with AWS. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, and for anyone who doesn't know what that means, it's uh, how Amazon makes most of their money through cloud infrastructure. Everyone thinks it's through Amazon.com from the store, but it's actually via their cloud platform. That's so funny that uh, they're saying that, but the truth is, when you start working at a job, especially entry level, you have so many opportunities to learn on the job about AWS. In fact, I just set a goal with my manager to get AWS certification like in my second year of being a software engineer. So don't worry about this one, um, but it is pretty funny because the truth is there are some nitpicky interviewers out there, but don't worry about it because 
like I say in, my, in a lot of my TikToks, I say it's more important that you have the aptitude to learn, the ability to learn as a software engineer, rather than how much knowledge you have to uh, bring into the interview. Let's go to the next one. Oh my God, this is so true. The thing about coding is that no matter how much you learn, you're always going to run into, uh, you're gonna get stumped all over the place. You're always running into new territory. So the truth is, I, and I wholeheartedly say this, to be an, a really good programmer, you just have to be incredible at Googling things. And there's actually a certain skill to that. You have to know what inputs to put into the search engine to get the outputs that you want uh, via Stack Overflow, Google, whatever, whatever you're, you're trying to find an answer to. Let's go to the next one. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this one. Tries to hack every aspect of life, sure. Only drink sparkling water. Yes, that is so true. So at, uh, at work, we have a bunch of different types of sparkling water and everyone loves it. It's uh, called LaCroix. Listen to audiobooks at the gym. Very true. Types code in game chat pretending to cheat. Eh, I haven't done that. I'm not, a, I'm not much of a gamer, actually. Owns too many computers. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I just have this one laptop you're looking at right now. Wrists hurt from typing. Yes, absolutely. Noise canceling headphones block out the world. Yes, I, oh my gosh, like I say this all the time, but these AirPods, holy crap. Like these new AirPods Pro, like they have carried me so far as a software engineer because like when I'm in the office, obviously not now because we're all home, it's so hard to focus with everyone chattering. Okay. <laughs> It's so frustrating. Oh my God, it's so true. Like you're working your ass off to like write one line of two lines of code just to get one tiny functionality. And then you spend hours trying to figure it out that if that's your jam, go for it. But for me, it's just like so frustrating. What ends up happening is there's always someone at the company who has experienced the problem you have. So if you're not afraid to reach out to people and harass other people about your problems, great. But the truth is you're gonna have to learn um, how to be independent and it's called Autonomy, you have to have autonomy with your with your practices. So learn how to Google my friends <laughs> That's so bad, but it's so true. All right, so basically what he went to was a website called Stack Overflow. It's a big forum for people to help each other with code. And what he did was he essentially just copied the command. Uh, he copied the code that was in the Stack Overflow. And that's actually something a lot of people do, but I work in cybersecurity and we've been advised not to do that just because people can actually hide uh, executable code inside of those commands when you just copy things usually you're fine but in also you don't want to put like plagiarism is as, as far as like someone else's code in your own project if you're doing this for school or if you're doing something like you should make sure to at least change the variable names keep the logic but yeah this is definitely something that software engineers do on a real basis it's really not that glamorous i mean everyone's like you should learn how to code all over the internet it's like literally it's plastered all over the internet and yes it makes a lot of money but it's it's like you have to love it like anything else it's i love solving problems but just because you love solving problems it doesn't mean that you want to solve problems by pulling your hair out with two lines of code all day long sorry as you could probably see how i feel about this profession Ooh, this one looks juicy. The secret to becoming a software developer under the plus sign. Wait, what does that even mean? I get asked all the time how to get a job in technology. And the first thing you need to do is make sure you're programming as much as you possibly can. The second thing is you need to ask yourself, when I back it up, is it fat enough? Definitely important to learn that when you back it up, it's fat enough. So you do want to code as much as you can. I mean, that goes along with anything. If you want to build a skill, you have to actually practice that said skill for like a very long time. But um, very important to make sure that it's fat enough if you back it up. I'm a software engineer. Okay. Impress me. See, what? I don't, okay. 
that was stupid. When a software, okay, here's the same guy. I just love this miso dope guy. When a programmer's code doesn't work. <laughs> that's so, okay, okay. Basically what he's saying is like, so he's on Slack because that's like how we communicate with our, with our team, but he's talking to his boss, quote unquote, and he responds and the boss says, your code isn't working in, deve in develop here. I'll show you. So what he's saying is your code isn't working in develop, which is, uh, at least in my company, that's the master branch. So, uh, your team works on the same code but it's hell, it's hell hosted up in the on like on the cloud and they use a something called git or source control he's saying that it doesn't work for everyone else but what he's saying is it works on local so it works on my computer uh, which is something that goes back and forth literally every single day uh, or backwards it, it, it happens in the reverse too so like a couple days ago I was working on a, a project where it wasn't working on my local it wasn't working on my computer but it was working uh, on the cloud so it was like backwards but you have these like these problems that are just so frustrating because you have to, sometimes they're just configuration issues. They're not actually problems with the work you're doing. Once again, another source of frustration. One, oh, one more. Quarantine life tech condition. Tech, tech edition. Okay, so this one's very true as well. I'm just gonna go through this one again and break it down. So we do have LaCroix, like sparkling water at, at the office at all times. Uh, we don't have like cheese or anything like that, but we do have like a bunch of free snacks. Um, depending on the tech company, they do have personal chefs as well. Uh, like the big tech companies in Silicon Valley, but I'm in Boston. Desk that doesn't stand. So everyone at our company has these really amazing standing desks that I actually plan on buying for my next apartment where you push a button and then you can stand up at the same desk that you're sitting down. It's good for your health and it also keeps you kind of like not bored when the day goes long. You can just kind of like mess with the desk a little bit. That's very, very true. So that's all the TikToks I'm gonna share today. Very interesting um, how people are kind of universally talking about the same theme where everyone thinks you're like these super cool hackers like Mr. Robot style. But the truth is we're just debugging like a couple lines of code a day. You end up spending most of your day fixing broken code rather than writing new code or getting code to run in general. That's, That's just the reality of what software engineering is unless you're working at a startup where you're building a lot of code from scratch. But if you're jumping in and you wanna like work at a big company, Google, Facebook, where I work, VMware, you're gonna have to work uh, on a code, code base that has already been like completely developed by someone else and you're just going in, you're swimming and you're digging, you're digging your little, little hole. <laughs> Yeah, outside of this big, uh, this big framework. Thank you so much for staying to the end. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do me the honor of just smashing that like button. Just takes a quick second and it really, really helps me out. And if you're new here, then consider subscribing for uh, more videos like this. Just let me know what you wanna see. And with that said, I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.